All right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from sunny San Diego. And today I am delighted to be able to welcome back Ruben Gonzalez, who is up in Colorado. How are you doing, Ruben? Doing great, John. How's it going? It's going fantastic. And uh, and Ruben is a four-time Olympian a, a, uh, in the luge, uh, a, a professional speaker and author. Uh, and you competed in, I think it's four Olympics now, isn't it, Ruben? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Calgary, yeah. Alperville, Salt Lake City, and Vancouver. Four, four different Excellent. decades. Excellent. And and Ruben started, uh, the good thing about Ruben is, I mean, he started luge at such an early age. I mean, he practically was on a luge from the age of about, you know, no, 21. So he started, started his luge career at, at a time when probably a lot of losers are, re are retiring <laughs> 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 or at least in their prime. Um, and, and you made it, you fulfilled your dream. So what we want to talk about today is the power of of following the leader. So you did a recent TEDx talk that's done phenomenally great, uh, Ruben, and it's about the power of following the leader. So um, kind of let's start out there. What do, you, what do you mean when you say the power of following the leader? You know, uh, I got into the luge because uh, I'm not much of an athlete and I got excited about the Olympics. And I decided, uh, you know, I have to find a sport that fits my my strength. My strength was perseverance. So I thought it looks like a lot of broken bones, maybe a lot of quitters. I just won't quit. And that's what led me to the luge. And uh, that that hard headedness and the perseverance helped me stay in the game long enough to to uh, learn the skills, even at that late, late age. But it hurt me where uh, I would always resist following my coach's advice. It's funny. I would mm. always look for the coach or the mentor uh, ever since I was a little kid. My, my dad said, if you have to come field, it probably makes sense to follow somebody who's already crossed it. So he always taught me to find the, the, the coach, the mentor, the person's already done what you want to do. That's the right leader for anybody. And um, but 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 my hard headedness, I, I resisted. Right. Eventually, I would follow the advice, but but I waited. And so for three Olympics, I, I resisted following the leader and I got hurt a lot and I, it could have been a lot easier uh, road for me. But um, it wasn't until about two years before the Vancouver Olympics. I was training for the for the Vancouver Vancouver Olympics. I was uh, going to be 47 in Vancouver, by far mm -hmm. the oldest athlete. Mm -hmm. And where before the top 50 in the world got to go. Now only the top 40 in the world got to go. And I was always ranked about 45. So I, I felt right. I had my back to the wall. And I thought I got to do something I've never done. I better listen to coach right away. And, um, and I just made that decision. And my coach said it was a new coach. And he said, I, I can't believe you're still scared, man. You've been sliding for 25 years and you're still scared. What's going on in your head? <laughs> and I said, man, is that those walls going faster and faster? I get tighter and tighter. And I can't believe I can even steer at the bottom of the track because by then I'm tight like a board. And he said, mm -hmm. you're focusing on the wrong thing. The, you know, luge is not about speed. They, they can clock you at the fastest speed, but if you crash at the bottom, you lose the race. It's about who has the best time. So stop looking at those walls, put on blinders like a horse and focus on what you need to do in every section of every curve to ensure you have the best time. If you'll change mm -hmm. your focus, the fear will disappear. And it made sense, right? Stop focusing on your circumstances and focus on what you need to do to, yeah. to succeed. And so that night I did about 100 mind runs, visualization runs with blinders on, just focusing on, on what I needed to do. And believe it or not, the, the, the next day on my next run, the fear disappeared. I mean, it, it didn't reduce in intensity. It disappeared. Sure. Changing the focus changed everything. So that's yeah. when I, uh, I started improving, right? If you're not scared, now you can really start improving. And I was sliding better at 55 uh, than I was when I was a kid because that's when I really mm -hmm. became a believer and just, you know, let go and follow coach's advice. And, uh, you know, <laughs> they, they have your they, they have the best uh, in store for you, right? The, the, yeah, the, not gonna absolutely. Say something that'll hurt you. absolutely. 
Absolutely. So what do you think it is? Why do you think it, it is that people often resist? I mean, especially, I mean, you know, when you're younger and you play sports, uh, you listen to the coach or whatever. And then when you get older and you get into your job, yeah, you, know, you listen to people for a while, but then you get experienced, right? And you become, then you start to know everything. Uh, so what is it that holds people back from actually listening to the advice of others or, or actively going and seeking a coach, regardless of whether it's in business or in sport? You know, it's control. You know, I, I, I want it to be in control. Right. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, I've always been very independent, which is just a nice way of saying uh, I don't like people telling me what to do. <laughs> I want to do it my way. And so mm -hmm. uh, I want to be in control. And that control controlled me for three Olympics. And, um, you know, because in the old days, you know, if you wanted to improve at anything or, or master a craft, you became an apprentice. He found the expert and he followed their advice. I mean, what's the point mm -hmm. of having a coach or a mentor if you don't follow their advice? And so yeah. uh, being in control feels safe, right? But uh, being in, in control keeps you in your comfort zone and you can't improve your comfort zone. Letting go, that's scary, right? But letting go gets you mm -hmm. out of that comfort zone so you can improve. And, and so when I realized that being in control is what was holding me back, that's when I made a uh, quality decision, right? Because success is a decision. Sooner or later, mm -hmm. you know, you you get to the point where, uh, you know, uh, you're willing to do whatever it takes for as long as it takes to get the job done. So yeah. I just decided, hey, I'm just going to let go and follow the leader and see what happened. And it worked, right? And mm -hmm. <clears throat> since then, I mean, I've done, I've, I've gotten to the point where I won't do anything without finding the coach. Uh, when I wanted to run with the bulls in Spain, I, I, I read three books about Pamplona. I actually called <laughs> one of the authors. I asked him, you know, for some tips and advice, and he gave me a handful of tips that, you know, potentially saved my life, right? When I wanted to climb Kilimanjaro, you know, we hired a a, a guide, right? Mountain guy that mm -hmm. climbed Kili a hundred times. And you got to find somebody, somebody that has fruit on the trees, right? Not a theorist, somebody has done it. But if you're in sales, you know, you go, you know, who, who's salesman or sale, you know, salesperson of the, of the month? Take them out to Starbucks. Successful people, they mm -hmm. like to talk about success, right? And they'll tell you how they did it. And you'll learn some tips. And so it's it's about finding the person, finding the right leader, the one that's done it, mm -hmm. and then being open to to do what they they did. And uh, yeah. it, it speeds everything up. I mean, it simplifies things and speeds things up and <laughs> helps you reach your goals a lot yeah. faster. Yeah. And the funny thing is that, that you mentioned there about reaching your goals faster or getting to the getting to the bottom of the track, uh, that it became it, it, the fear went away and you improved a lot when you were segmenting things as opposed to because I think this is a trap a lot of people fall into. Like, it's great to have big goals and ambitions and all of that. But you got to focus on the steps to getting there, because if you're just constantly focused on the end, the big goal, it'll always appear too far away. And you'll always think, wow, well, this is too hard. I'm not getting any closer. But if you if you examine the fact that you're taking steps towards that, then it's then you can see progress. But but sometimes we get so captivated from the goal, we forget about the steps in between. That's a great point. I mean, it, it reminds me of a uh, first first time I. I I wrote a book. I went to a, a mentor. I've been speaking professionally for three months and I realized, well, okay, I can tell stories, but I don't know how to build this business. I need, I need some help. And I mm. found a guy who was successful. He'd been in the business for 12 years and you know, he had fruit on the trees and he agreed to meet with me. And first thing out of his mouth is, I don't care if you're a 10 time Olympian, uh, unless you write a book, no one's going to take you seriously because the author is considered the authority of the subject. He wrote the book on it. He went on and on. I told him, man, I made C's in English, okay? I can't write a book. <laughs> and he says, you got a great story. You write it down. We'll give it to some A students. They clean it up for you. That's just grammar. I thought, oh, my gosh, I didn't think about that. He goes, yeah, it's called editing, all right? So shut up. And edit. <laughs> me on the head. But uh, that made me realize, you know, uh, we when we're trying to go after something, Sometimes we, we quit before we even get started because we're so sure that we don't have what it takes, right? Logically, I can't write a book. I made C's in English. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. and, and then he, as the guide, right, who'd already done it, he says, no, just do this, this, and this piece of cake. And then he said, like, like you were just saying, to break it down, he says, don't even think mm -hmm. of it as a book. 
Think of it as a, as a bunch of articles. Don't even think about chapters. They're just a bunch of articles, okay? And pretend that each article is like a letter you're writing to your best friend. You're going to just write it in that kind of, of language. And you're going to you know tell them a story and teach them a lesson. That's it. So it was kind of like eating a salami one slice at a time, right? It's a lot easier that way. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, uh, and and great and great point. It, it's a great point again. Again, Ruben is that uh, exactly. I mean, how many times do we give up on things because we don't think we have the talent, we don't think we have the capacity to do it, but we ha haven't actually validated how hard the ta the thing is that we're trying to do because we haven't actually spoken to other people who've done it. Amen. Amen. You know, when we uh, uh, when we were at the trailhead of Kilimanjaro and Kili is so neat, it's a five day climb. You start in the jungles at about five thousand feet. I mean, there's monkeys around. The monkeys are like mm -hmm. like uh, they're like um, like squirrels. Right. They're all around you because people feed them. And then you go through mm -hmm. five ecosystems until up at the summit. You're you know, it's a it's a glacier. And uh, and in between, there's this part where it feels like you're you're in a Dr. Seuss book, okay? Because these plants are just the weirdest looking plants you've ever seen. Anyways, he said uh, the guide he got real real uh, serious, and he says, "Okay, guys, for the next five days, you step where I step, you eat when I eat, you drink when I drink, you you rest when I rest, you pee when I pee, okay? And if you do that, uh, you in five days you get your picture on the top of Africa." And if you feel <laughs> any discomfort, don't wait till it's pain because by then it's too too late, okay? Things happen quickly, get worse quickly at altitude. Any discomfort, you let me know, chances, I've seen it all. I can nip it in the bud. And so we did that. You know, I'm not a mountain climber. I'm a mountain guide follower, okay? <laughs> and, and that's cool with me. I still got my picture on top of Africa. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's a, well, well, that's the fantastic point here, Ruben, isn't it? It's... It's it doesn't you know people people don't actually remember or or even bother to look at how did you get to you say I went to the top of Mount Kilimanjaro they're not like oh who who was who was your backup team let me know who was behind they just go wow that that's that's cool and I think sometimes people think well if I get all these people to help me you know it's not really the same achievement well well it is because you got those people to help you <laughs> right putting the team together you're right yeah. you're right. And, and, and the willingness, right? And, and it comes back to uh, growing up, you know? Uh, mm -hmm. People go through three stages. First, they're dependent, right? The, the baby's dependent. He needs everything from mom and dad. And then when they're a teenager, boy, they're independent, right? They, they're, they're, they think they can do everything uh, on their own. And then hopefully yeah, plus, they, plus they Plus they know, yeah, plus they know everything, right? Oh, yeah, they know everything, right? And, and their parents are suddenly stupid, right, in, in their mind. <laughs> And then hopefully they grow out of that and they become interdependent, right? And that's the highest level. And I was independent for a long time, right? Till I was in my late 40s. And finally, I, you know, I, I grew out of it. So part of it is just growing up and, and realizing that, hey, uh, I can't do everything, but I sure can do a lot of neat things if I follow the leader. Yeah, no, and, and it's a great point. And I do think that, uh, you know, uh, it takes a long time sometimes for people to grow up. I'm, I'm like you. I would say I'm like a late, 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 late grower upper. <laughs> um, but but the but the point is though is it's so liberating when you stop kind of putting yourself at the center of everything and you start to look outside and you start to as you say like look at who do i need to help me what help do i need to give them that kind of thing. Once you position yourself a little bit differently, then it becomes a lot easier. Yeah, it's uh, it's when you said liberating, I was thinking, oh, you know, it's kind of like that. <laughs> last last yeah. week we drove. Uh, it was about twelve or thirteen hours each way to to uh, from Colorado Springs to Springfield, uh, Missouri, for a for a uh, church function, a big competition over there. And it was a caravan. It was about five or six cars. And when you were in the front, that was hard work, right? Because you had to be mm -hmm. paying attention. You have to make sure you're on the right road, right? You don't make a wrong turn. When you were in the back drafting, not only were you saving a little bit of gas, you were, uh, you know, you could zone out almost, right? You're just following that, <laughs> that car. And it, it, it's it's a lot like that. You don't have to think as hard. And so it is liberating. Yeah. It's, uh, anyways, um, it, uh, I, I'll, I just wish I'd have, I, I'd have learned this one earlier, but hey, I'm, I'm glad I did.
Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, it's better better late than better late than never. Um, but yeah, but there's 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 an interesting point as well. I mean, you talked about drafting there because I mean, if you ever watch, um, you know, say Tour de France or whatever, and you see those cyclists, even and the the the, the fascinating thing about cyclists is even it's competitors. Even you're fight you're you're cycling against somebody, you happen to be out at the front. They'll still work together for a while because they know they that that it serves both of their purposes. And then yeah. when you see them with the teams, the teams are continually switching out to to you know keep everybody fresh and all of that. And and the the power in team and teams don't have to be huge, but the power of of having people to help you like that. So in in a in a bicycle race, you know you got the team leader. He can't do it without the rest of the team helping all the way. Absolutely. You know, I I actually took a. Uh, a cycling class once in Houston oh, over 20 years ago at, at a velodrome. It was so cool. They taught you how to, mm -hmm. you know, you, special way you have to ride and you have to be careful that that bottom pedal doesn't, you know, that doesn't hit the, yeah. the ground, right? When you're leaning over, actually the top pedal. And, um, and, and we were drafting and, and it was amazing. We had this little Peloton and it was amazing how fast you could go forever, right? When you were, <laughs> As long as you stayed within a foot to a foot and a half from that back tire in front of you. But if it if you went past a foot and a half, it's like a sledgehammer hit you and you were done. There was no way you're going to catch those guys. And so, mm -hmm. um, yeah, it, it's, it just makes it easier. But it takes – you got to humble yourself, right? And you have to uh, realize, hey, I'm not Superman. Um, I, I, I'm just going to be the best that I can be and the smartest I can be. You know, <laughs> let's, let's draft somebody. Yeah. Yeah, and 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 that's a key point there that you just raised is that you have to humble yourself. And I think if there's anything that experience and uh, and the longer you uh, you're on this planet, if there's one thing that it definitely you get a lot of lessons in humility. And uh, and what and if you uh, if you actually can adopt that and say, okay, um, you know, now's it. I'm too old now to be, you know. I'm too old to be the smartest, know everything, whatever. I need to be, I need to recognize skill sets around me. I need to know where, you know, where I need help, et cetera. And, um, and yeah, it, it's, it's, you've got to, you've got to have a level of humility to do that. Yeah. And, and, you know, in, in the luge, I tell you, as soon as you get this, <laughs> we usually coaches will move us around. Uh, we'll spend two weeks in one track. And then, mm -hmm. uh, and then no longer than, than two weeks, because what happens is you start getting bored, right? And you start getting cocky. You think, oh, I got this figured out. And as soon as you do that, you're going to have a crash and get hurt. Or, or you just, you, you stop improving. You plateau after about two weeks. But if you go from, let's say, uh, Eagles, which is the track next to Innsbruck, two weeks there. Then you drive up to Koenigsee, which is over by Vienna, in a couple of weeks there. And you go up to um, Winterberg, which is up in Germany, two weeks there. You come back down to Eagles again, right, where you started for a couple of weeks. You're probably a second faster than you were before because instead of plateauing, you you hit a higher level every single time. And so um, they, they don't – the coaches have figured out. They don't want us to, uh, you know, think we got it figured out because that's when we get hurt. And, 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 it, and it works, right? You got to keep it keep, – keep changing, keep – keep changes good because it keeps you sharp you know and so um <clears throat> so it, these are principles that work in everything right they work in sales in yeah. business and luge and life and in anything yeah yeah because it's a great good point because let's face it i mean you know we're we're hardwired to look for comfort sometimes so if you're like going well this is good i've just track yeah i've kind of got the hang of this i'll, I'll just stay here uh, as opposed to, as you said, challenge yourself and go to go to other tracks, and it's the same in in work and business. Sometimes you try to stay within those, uh, within the narrow confines of where you are, instead of spreading your wings. And you did mention something earlier that I just wanted to come back with, and that was uh, when you worked with the with the book, right, writing the book, and the guy says, you know, you're not a writer. Okay, who cares? You're you're you can tell stories, but and we help we find the other people to to. Um, to do the other parts of it. And I think that's that's where we fall down a lot in business is that we don't focus on people's strengths and then support them with whatever they need in order to be the best that they can be at that. Instead, we start to focus on their on where we think their deficiencies are instead. And it's so backwards. Oh, no, you got a major on your majors. I mean, if you have a yeah, I mean, just think uh, the, the coach of a football team, you know, that big 300 pound guy, he's not going to 
put him as a wide receiver, right? That guy needs to be on the line. And uh, mm-hmm. and, if, and the guy that can hit those passes, okay, well, let's. how about we make that guy a quarterback? And so major on the major, figure out what your strength is and run with that. And I, I just had lunch with uh, about a couple of weeks ago with Scott Hamilton, the, the figure skater. Right. And he said mm-hmm. something that's really, really uh, good. And he says, I tell this to my kids so much that they roll my eyes at me all the time. But he says, you know what the biggest strength is? No weaknesses. <laughs> so he says, <laughs> you know, work on your weaknesses too, right? But but major on the majors. And, uh, and he says, yeah, the no weaknesses is good. You know, when you're doing a, a, a figure skating uh, program, you know, you have to be able to do many different things. You can't just uh, be a specialist because everybody can see everything there, right? Mm-hmm. So, um, I, um, it's funny, you mentioned the book, uh, I, I did this Ted talk, the, 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 the power of following the leader. Oh, mm-hmm. about a month and a half ago. And everybody that I'd mentioned, uh, this, the subject to, uh, they, they get all excited, right? Uh, the bosses get excited because they say, man, well, if I could just get the millennials to listen to me and the, uh, yeah. millennials- People say, you know, if I could just get the soldiers to listen to me, I mean, everybody's got, and the coaches say, if I could just get my, 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 my athletes to listen to me. And so I got so much positive feedback that I thought, you know, maybe I, maybe this, this could be a good subject for a book. And Mm -hmm. and so I started, I thought, how about one of these parable books, right? Like the one minute manager or, or uh, the, the go giver. Uh, But that's fiction. I've I've written a lot Mm -hmm. of five books, but they're all, my books are how-to books, right? They're nonfiction. Yeah, yeah. So I didn't know. I didn't know how to do characters. I didn't know how how to put a story together. I mean, that was a totally different genre, but I still thought it was a great idea. And so I went out and I bought, I had a few of them. I had three or four of them, but I went out to the dollar, uh, to the half price uh, bookstore and I got a whole pile of them, right? Like 15. And over a period of two weeks, I just blasted through about 10 of them. I mean, just reading them to see if I could find, you know, similarities and, and I could mm-hmm. figure things out. And I wake up in the middle of the night. I mean, this is a testament to how the mind works. I mean, it's amazing how your subconscious, you know, I, I was feeding them all, feeding it all this stuff. I wake up in the middle of the night and I had the whole story in my head. I mean, it all came together. And then I realized, hey, I can I can use characters that are, that were friends of mine, right? That that were mm-hmm. coaches and and other, so they already have built-in personalities. So long story short, I this was like a month ago, and I just finished writing this the, the first draft of this book. And I just uh, just a few minutes ago, I I uh, sent the PDF to a handful of people that know how to write. Say, hey, would you take a look at this and you know give me some constructive uh, uh, criticism, right? And who knows, you know, maybe we'll see a, a, a follow the leader book one of these days real soon uh, because of that. And so it's, it's, it goes to what you just said, you know, don't stay in that box, you know, take a chance and do something else because uh, who knows? I mean, that might be, uh, that might open up a whole new uh, uh, market uh, that will help the speaking business. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I, absolutely. I mean, I always encourage people, like, if there's something you think you want to do, if there's an itch there, like, scratch it, try it, find out. I mean, life's too short. Well, listen, Ruben, as usual, this has been fantastic. All of Ruben's information will be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. I'm a, a four-time Olympic athlete in the sport of luge. Uh, I've been speaking professionally for 20 years now. Uh, lots of sales kickoffs because my background was in, in copier sales, but I do all types. Mm-hmm. I open and close events and I've spoken all over the world and uh, and, and written several, uh, several books. I sold uh, over 300,000 copies of books. So uh, real mm-hmm. bestseller, not one of these Amazon bestsellers. Yeah, yeah, no, real bestseller. Exactly. And by the way, uh, for people who don't know it, uh, business books, um, uh, tend they they measure success at about three thousand or four thousand copies sold or something very low like that so for to have so like three hundred thousand or whatever is is an amazing achievement just to put it in some context for people and we look forward yeah and we're looking forward to the next one yeah yeah, yeah, thank you man all right thanks again ruben thank you all for watching and listening and i'll see you all again soon